We are really honored to have a real luminary in the automotive business, especially as it comes to connected cars and cars that are moving rapidly toward autonomy, and that would be Volvo. So please help me in welcoming the CEO and president of Volvo Cars, Hakan Samuelson. <laughs> you got a bark, too. That's pretty good. That's quite an endorsement. Three barks, no less. Uh, now, Hakan, we've been talking in the last two sessions here about autonomy, both the technology to get there, and as you just heard now, the big impacts on society of cars that begin to self-drive. What is self-driving? Drive Me is your platform at Volvo. What is the big picture? Are you in the autonomous driving game, or are you in the bigger picture, what I would call the societal change yeah, game? Uh, I would say both. I think first is uh, very important to to limit a bit the scope, because I don't think we will see cars where you walk in and then press a button, take me to A from B, and there is no steering wheel, nothing. I think we will have a conventional car, which is used when it's uh, nice to drive, mm -hmm. when it's joyful, uh, but then you reach uh, a certain uh, passage where uh, you have a queue situation, and I think you will see then on a screen autonomous drive uh, possible, and then you would press the auto function more or less as, as you do today with an adaptive cruise control. And I think that is realistic also if you take into safety into consideration, because I mean, in downtown areas, you have dogs, uh, children, whatever, mm -hmm. and there is road construction going on. It is uh, very dangerous and, and uh, really, tricky situation. I don't think that is necessary. So automate the boring part of driving. Right. Release, uh, free up time to let people do something uh, more interesting than just sitting there waiting. Now let me ask you about that free time. What will Volvo do as a company to help occupy that free time? Some car makers will say, we're just going to create autonomy and that's as far as we go. Others say we can become more of a partner in that experience when you have a time for other experiences, richer media coming in the car. Would you envision Volvo becoming a, a curator of content and services in the car that can fill that recaptured time? Yeah, I, in, in a way, I think you have to leave it to the customer really to, uh, to decide what they do with that uh, time. But I think we should be very open and not trying to fence out or, or invite special uh, uh, programming or content that we like. So I think we will have a very uh, open attitude, and I think we would like to invite both uh, Apple CarPlay, uh, Google into our cars to offer an alternative, and, and then it's up to the customers to choose what to do. Uh, and uh, I think uh, we have to be a bit humble also to mm -hmm. understand we have no ideas of what uh, people will make of these uh, 30 minutes a day that we will just free up. Mm -hmm. Volvo's expression of CarPlay, it's very early days still, but in the, uh, in the technology samples I've seen, you're doing something other car makers don't do as much. You're really integrating CarPlay and Volvo interface very much side by side, coexisting, mm -hmm. where other car makers tend to keep them teased apart. You can go into their interface or CarPlay. You seem to have a happier marriage. What's your thinking? There? Now we want to, to integrate them. I think we will have in the car, of course, functionality that's absolutely captive. I mean communication with our service station and uh, mm -hmm. and also of course we have a lot of know-how how information is presented in the car in a safe way uh, so that we will do but uh, I think also we would have a certain section of the of the touch screen where you could see uh, an Android uh, device Google or or an Apple CarPlay and, and then it's up to the customer if he presses Apple then of course the normal Apple screen will mm -hmm. pop up in a more sort of mirroring uh, uh, type of functionality. And, and I think uh, you should um, let the customer decide if he wants to use Google Maps or if he wants to use a captive navigation system in, in, in our car. I think uh, that would be really smart. My last question for you is, uh, Volvo is known for safety. Uh, it's a reputation that no car company would mind having, certainly. So I'm sure you're very pleased to carry that into this new era. Uh, as we look at the autonomous future, is safety still your main message or is it more of a technology message? Where, what is your number, if you have one word that goes with Volvo, could you, could you choose one? 
I would still say uh, protecting what's important for you. I mm -hmm. mean, the safety of, your, of your, your family and, and the environmental performance of the car. But safety is something where I think also we are credible. We have been working with that since 1927, so mm -hmm. why not build from that? But take that into the new world using modern uh, technology. And I think autonomous drive is probably one of the most powerful ways of reducing uh, accidents in the future because most of them now are caused by human errors. Mm -hmm. So we should have technology making the cars more forgiving for human behavior, which we cannot probably change that much. Lightning round real quick. 2050, European Commission has in some form projected an accident-free zone in the EU. Do you buy it? Is it possible? I think it's good uh, to have a vision that you have to improve <laughs> and I mean uh, speculating how far down you will come it doesn't bring anything. I think we should uh, just do our most to, to reduce accident. I think we have a similar view where we have defined a vision 2020. Nobody should die or be seriously injured in a Volvo. I think that's the mm -hmm. only vision you could have, uh, zero. Uh, but That's pretty of ambitious course, in itself. It's ambitious, and, and what's important is I should have the direction towards zero. And, uh, and I think autonomous drive is a very important uh, means to, to reach that. But uh, we know already today, if you compare in the statistics in Sweden, for example, the risk of being injured or, or dying in a Volvo is about 50% compared with an average car. So I, so I think we have been working since 1927 and we see result of that. So I think there is more to do. And now there is new technology, which of course is perfect for us. This is an area that fits our brand and, and here we want to be leaders. Can you maintain your leadership as the safe protecting brand or is the commoditization of autonomous technology from all these vendors going to put you more on equal footing with competitors. Yeah, but I think that has always been the case. So it's, so it's uh, the same thing. You have to prioritize and choose the areas where you want to be leading and, and uh, try to be smarter and faster. And, mm -hmm. and I think also having a strong brand helps us to focus. All of our 20,000 people working in say, Volvo knows safety is important. Autonomous drive is, is a perfect thing for us because we can take a step more. So there will be ideas and, and uh, it's an area where I don't have to push too much. There is coming up uh, ideas all the time because everybody knows this is our, that's, this is our uh, theme. This is where we will be winners in the future. Good. Hakan, thank you for your time. Thank Ladies you. and gentlemen, Hakan Samuelson, President and CEO of Volvo Cars. Thank you.